Hi, Guru. Um, hopefully I pronounced your name correctly there. I've been on Google and had a little bit of a search. Um, it's, not a, it's, it's not a Preston name, so apologies if I've pronounced that incorrectly. Um, in regards to the swing, a lot of really, really good things going on in the swing. Um, if you relate, uh, if you think in terms of what's happening with your ball flight, you talk about the deflected draw. Uh, and then maybe sort of potential low point issues. I wouldn't imagine the low points uh, tremendously back looking at the quality of your overall action. Um, the strike might not be, you know, as compressed as you would like it. Uh, but I wouldn't imagine for one minute you're going to be hitting uh, several inches behind the ball, far from it. But they do relate to the club face being too square at impact. Now, obviously, the club face being square at impact um, Potentially could be quite a simple thing to change. We just release the club less, uh, weaken the grip, etc. But in, in other occasions, it's not that simple. I mean, looking at yourself, there are things in your action that are going to make um, the club close down quite quickly, um, irrespective of how hard you're trying to... Um, control that and re prevent that from happening so what I'd like to do is just give you a little overview here of things that you need to consider um, along with a couple of key changes that you definitely need to make and the sooner you can make them the better so you know first of all let's set up little things that I would I would potentially look at for yourself would be sort of tidying up the eye tilts were a little bit sort of tilted to the right there with the neck at a dress. Now when the eyes are tilted uh, that way the, the angle of the eyes goes to the right and that tends to be the line that we swing down. Uh, if you look at Grant Way here at the bottom the eye line is much more level as are the neck tilts. So we'd be looking at little things like that that could potentially lead to you having uh, right aim issues. Uh, it could also, like we said, we play sports predominantly with our eyes, particularly when we switch off. If you will, in the downswing, and we start reacting to the golf ball, and if that eye line is shifted to the right because of the way the neck's tilted, we can start to swing along that line despite our best efforts. So that's the first thing I'd, I'd like you to consider. Um, the second thing I'd like you to consider is the positioning of your feet. I'd like to see, and I prefer to see, a foot flow like Grant White here, where both feet are turned out approximately 20 degrees. We're quite square in the feet, which means we're also sort of pointing the knees a little bit too much inwards, which can restrict the turning of the hips and can also compromise the leg action uh, during the through swing. So turning both feet out is very, very good for stability and also for injury prevention. So, you know, both feet turned out about 15 to 20 degrees. Now, the change that you do need to make, and you need to make this, like I said, sooner rather than later, is we need to get the weight further forward. If we take a line down from the centre of the shoulder turn, we can see that it's quite a way behind the ball. And if we do the same with Grant, we can see that it's much more over the top of the ball. I would say that set up, you've got maybe, you know, eight, nine degrees of side bend away from the target. So the upper centre and the lower centre, there's a little bit too much of a sort of, of a differential there for an iron. Now, that's not a bad differential to have with a driver because we can shallow out the descent and hit up on the ball a little bit more. But with an iron, we want to be hitting it with negative loft. I'd certainly like to see less of a difference. Uh, and the feeling would be to get both centres directly over the top of one another. The way I would do that is I would think in terms of where the weight is located. This could also help uh, with the tilts in the heads. I would go short term at least. 65% uh, in favour of the lead leg and then obviously 35% in favour of the trail leg so you know if you want to frame it that way 6.5 on the left 3.5 on the right that's going to move the upper centre forward that's going to produce a slightly steeper angle of attack uh, and more compression on the golf ball and it's also going to help realign the line of the swing so the swing direction when I'm looking at you down the line appears to be shifted a little bit too much to the right. So reallocate the weight that's set up 
reposition the feet at setup, they're the first things that I would consider in regards to your overall action. If we now look at what happens to your swing uh, on the way back for face on, my main concern here is that there's not enough extension, the head works down. So we're turning and we're working the left shoulder down, but there's not quite enough extension. With Grant, you're going to see that the head is much more stable as he turns, extends, and left tilts. So if you think about your head in relation to that box, if you were turning, extending, and left tilting, you'd stay within the box. If you were turning and extending without left tilting, you'd lift up out of the box. So if we're dropping down, we're not extending the spine enough. So we want to stretch that spine off a little bit more. Now if we do a little line up here, you can see that the gap from the left hip up through the upper body is a little bit more substantial with yourself than it is with Grant at that point in your swing. You've got limited freedom in the left arm as well because of that. If you were to stretch the spine off more to where this red line is, the left arm would travel more, which would give you a little bit more potential for height and speed, uh, but would also help you coordinate the way in which the accumulators release in the downswing uh, in a little bit more of an appropriate manner. So I'd like to see a little bit more extension in the spine. Generally speaking, when you put the weight forward at setup, you're in a much better position to extend. Uh, so it would be quite interesting to see uh, when you reallocate the weight whether even without thinking about it, when you reallocate the weight and the eye line improves, uh, whether that left arm starts to travel a little bit more freely, because you'll certainly be in a better position to extend. Uh, if you've been researching online, there's talk about the sort of Frosbury flop move during the backswing. I don't think you necessarily need to, to go that much into it. I think there's, you know, there's sufficient changes being made without you having to do that, and you'll get that extension in there. So reallocate the weight and just be aware of where your head is within that box. We just lack a little bit of extension at the moment when viewed from face on. Excuse me. So I'm going to get rid of all the lines now for a set. And I'm going to play you down through to impact. In regards to the face closure, really nice move across. You can see there that the club face closes down quite quickly through the hit. You know, we're coming in there now, hitting the ball, and within a frame we can almost see the back of the golf club. There you go two frames we can see the back of the golf club when we look at Grant White coming into impact very similar move through the ball the back of the left wrist is much more stable and the rate of closure or the overtaking rate of the golf club is a little bit less and obviously I've no doubt that if you're hitting deflective draws um, and I would imagine the occasional hook with a longer club you're going to be trying to prevent that happening but it, you're finding that difficult hence the footage being sent across. If we look at it from down the line, we're going to see a really nice takeaway, super angles there, a little bit of a dropping of the head, which we talked about last time. So that's the, you know, again, that's the main issue that I've got there with your backswing from face on, not enough extension. Very similar angles with Charlie on the way back, club square to the arc, hands tracing the red line, which is a hand plane line from P1 to P2 before then elevating onto elbow plane as the right arm flexes from P2 to P4. A lot of similarities at that point. Now this is where things start to change. If we watch what Charlie does, now this is our desired hand path. We go back on hand plane, the red line, from P1 to P2. We then elevate onto elbow plane from P2 to P4 before coming directly down elbow plane. So the move from the top is directly down the elbow plane line. With yourself from P4, the hands drop under plane too much. So the hands dropping under plane positions the left arm too much inwards. So there's a difference between where Charlie is at P3 
in this particular piece of footage, it's a very good piece of footage for you to watch actually because he's, he's emphasising a particular move that you need to make. At P2, Ch sorry, P3, Charlie's arms are angled in about 40 degrees. Then as he transitions, at P5, his arms are angled in about 15 to 20 degrees. So he's actually made, if you will, an over-the-top move. But because his arms were far enough in at P3, that move over the top is still presenting the club from the inside. What you're going to do, let's get Charlie back at P5, is at P3, the arms are angled in about 40 degrees like we see with Charlie. But at P5, they're actually angled in more. They're angled in about 50 degrees. So if you think about that in terms of, you know, the arc of the swing, your club now is coming in very severely, or your hand path is very severely from the inside, whereas Charlie's is on more of a gentle arc. So you've got a huge corner to turn at the bottom now. Charlie's going to come through, the handle's a little bit lower, he's hitting from the inside, and then out and continuing to trace the arc through the ball. With yourself, the club's going to drop under plane at P6. From here now, we've got to turn that corner. Now, the only way to turn that corner is to throw the hands at it. And you see that a little bit with Rory McIlroy. He does it a different way to you. But you see that hands wrapping over, and that's why Rory, when he's not timing it very well, hits that deflected draw. So we're too much in at P6. We've now got to turn the corner. We do it by using the hands too much. And instead of hitting, continuously hitting out on the arc and tracing the circle back on the inside as we come through, we hit out excessively. Whenever we hit out excessively, accumulate a two, the left wrist, or the wrist, the hinge in the wrist, unloads too fast. And whenever accumulator 2 is unloading too fast, the rate, of, the rate of closure on the club face is increased. So what I would have you do initially, I'm just going to bring this up on its own. I would set up a practice session where I would have an alignment cane about 10 paces out in front of me directly on my target line and for at least 50 balls from a square setup like you've got there I would be trying to hit some pulls left of that cane so every shot would have to be a straight pull left of that cane and what that's going to start to do is it's going to start to change the way you change direction there, so your hands come in more as you change direction and we want the hands to drift out more so if you watch again what the model swing would be It's in and then over. So the butt of the club doesn't drop on the plane. So you want to spend a little bit of time hitting some pulls in practice. You want to reposition the weight at setup. Get the weight and the handle a little bit further forward, but mainly as the weight goes forward, the handle will go forward. You want to flare out the feet. Once you've flared out the feet, and once you've repositioned the weight 6.5 to 3.5 in favour of the lead leg, you'll be in a much better position to extend. Once you're more extended, what we need to do then is try and learn to hit that sort of pull shot. Now, we don't necessarily need you to go out and play with a pull, but you can see there that Charlie's, the butt of Charlie's club does not drop beneath that elbow plane line. And that would be the thing that you would want to catalogue more than anything in relation to the type of shot pattern that you've got. So when you're filming your swing, 
we look at the change of direction and we want the butt of the club to work straight down the target line as opposed to dropping under the target or, or straight down the target line straight down the elbow plane line sorry as opposed to dropping underneath the elbow plane line um, if you go onto my youtube channel there is a um, there's a, a video on there which is drills and exercises and I think it's drills and exercises too and I talk about hitting a pull spectrum now I show you how to set the canes up uh, during that video and that would be an excellent drill for you to do uh, just to gain control of that sort of that move from P4 to P5 once the club drops underneath plane at P5 uh, you really have got the devil's own job of trying to stop that club face closing down too fast because the problem you have to have is that if you don't close the club down quickly you're going to block the ball out to the right and if you close the club down a little bit too fast you're going to hook the ball to the left now the other issue is when the swing is shifted too much to the right that will always have the effect of shallowing out the angle of attack too much and moving the low point a little bit too far back now that is an issue that's going to cause low point control but with yourself the weight location at p1 is more of an issue put the weight forward that's going to take care of any low point issues give us a little bit more downward so that we don't have to drop the club quite as much on the inside to hit the draw shot that we want uh, if I do find any relevant uh, videos etc I'll email them across to you uh, I'll also uh, email any documents or images that I have that relate to uh, the items that we just discussed good luck with it hope you enjoyed the review um, if you've got any questions feel free to find me an email across uh, at any time don't stand on ceremony uh, I'd be glad to help with any questions that you have regarding your game and the overall system itself good luck with it and I look forward to watching this progress through the coming months well done